Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 197 of Category 5 Technology TV. Great to see you. And uh, it is Tuesday, June the 28th, 2011. I'm Robbie Ferguson. I'm Krista Wells. Nice to see you. Oh, it's How always good to see you. You're hanging out in the shadows of the camp tonight. I am. Yeah. I don't want to really be seen tonight. Oh, okay. I feel kind of like a scrub today, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> if you don't look at me, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Happy Canada Day uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I got my Canada Day shirt, but it's in fall colors, they say. Ah. That's that's my thing. So Nice to see everybody. Join us in the chat room, Category5.tv. It's Category5 on Freenode. And, uh, well, we got lots coming up tonight. We're going to be uh, starting a series on uh, checking out some of the modern versions of Linux, the distributions that are available for you to mm -hmm. download. Uh, we're going to be starting that tonight with PC Linux OS, brand new version that was just released uh, this week. And what do you got coming up tonight? Oh, well, we've got some uh, excellent questions in here. I think that uh, got some great questions from the viewers today. And yeah. uh, we got some news. Yeah, got some <laughs> You're news. Like, I, I'm going to completely <laughs> avoid talking about the news tonight. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Do you want me what? to tell them what's coming up in the news? Would that be safer? Oh, oh I get it. See, I complete <laughs> <laughs> completely did not get it. Okay. So, anyways, coming now, up I'll in the news. I'll just start room. the news by uh, when uh, just as you're about to start. You should be this. like Q. Oh, I made like extra certain that there was no hilarious news this week. A, that was very nice of you. No hilarious news this week. I, st I still Nothing completely tragic. missed your Q, though. I'm just, or, just yes. saying that was complete. It's all good. Blonde stupidity right there. So. All right, take it away. All right, so <laughs> coming up in the newsroom. KDE users have found their favorite apps blocked by Facebook and photos deleted from their profile. Mozilla's new release scheduled for Firefox has corporate users on the fence. A lawsuit in Germany could be devastating to GPL if one. PC Linux OS 2011.6 is out for 32-bit. Stick around, these stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Oh, see, I lied. I didn't realize there was something devastating in there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried really hard on... <gasps> <laughs> I got so many email from, from you, the viewers, uh, this week uh, about that little incident off the top of last week's show. I appreciate your emails. Uh, everybody uh, <laughs> wondering what uh, what was going on and having a good time. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah completely You never know what's going to happen with live TV. Fine. Fantastic. <laughs> hey, I uh, would love to hear from people if, uh, if this is your first time in the chat room or if you're just joining us, uh, if you've only been uh, live a couple of times, uh, let us know in the chat room. Make sure you say Robbie F. or Krista. Uh, you are logged in as Krista, yeah? There you yeah, are. So uh, just say our name and that will highlight it on our screen. And hopefully we'll catch you and be able to give some shouts out as well. Let us know where you're from as well. And how is everybody doing in the chat room? Hey, Chris Reich. Good guy. Jot. David Maydu. Agamotto. Gadwill. And Final Blogger. Nice to see you. D-Man 810. All right. Now you you noticed something in the chat room a little bit uh, before the show there. Yeah, a little birdie may have uh, told me that it's uh, their birthday today. And who's so, this? So uh, I think I think that's Final Blogger. So happy birthday to Final Blogger. Hey, Final Blogger! <laughs> happy birthday! Thanks for joining us. I've got some viewer pictures that were submitted this week uh, for points. Got a few. Uh, here's one from Agamotto, who says, uh, "Sorry about the uh, the quality or lack thereof of the photo, the smudginess, but uh, this is my setup to watch Category Five TV." So there you go. Very cool. Very cool. There we are. It, it almost looks like you're watching us on a 3D TV, <laughs> doesn't it? And we're just like, <laughs> whoa, just like that. <laughs> Agamotto, I'll uh, throw 100 points your way. Thank you very much. This one comes to me from Rachel, who says, Back in the old days of Star Trek, the aliens were certainly cheesy. Uh, they t uh, Take this episode with Robbie, for example. 
Uh, they didn't even put any makeup on him. <laughs> uh, uh, our viewers. I like that. That's Thanks great. for that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when we uh, when we introduce the uh, the the HD the high quality photos in the uh, in the static area of our site, which is hidden. But if you ask for it, you might get it. But this is what this is exactly what happens. Ah, uh, people. <laughs> and uh, Zabata, okay, I'll throw some viewer points your way, of course. Thanks for the uh, thanks for the uh, photo there. Zabata says, uh, "Hey again, uh, I was uh, just in my local shopping center in Crawley, England, and the irony of these two stores made me laugh. So I thought that I would share it with the viewers of Category Five. We've got the iStore Store next, next to the iStore Store." <laughs> Oh, How interesting. Oh, very clever. And this one here is giving free eye tests. Hmm. I think there's some irony there. I think there's some irony there. Fantastic. <laughs> I will throw you 30 viewer points for sending that in. Thanks. If you'd like to get some free viewer points uh, by submitting your viewer images, uh, snap a picture. Your best chance to get some points right now is to send us a picture of your setup as you're watching Category 5 TV. Uh, we especially love it if you can get into the photo as well. And uh, we'll give you 100 viewer points for that. And uh, we'll also give you viewer points if you throw something our way that's of interest to the viewers here at Category 5 TV. Uh, but they've got to be your own pictures that you've uh, taken or created yourself, if possible. Cool, cool. Great. Nice to see everybody. Jot says that it was spelt wrong. It should be eye tests. <laughs> letter I. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I wonder if they'd get away with that. Hmm, just <laughs> right next door. That'd be is that awesome. a lawsuit or? Definitely. <laughs> Apple will sue for anything that they think is infringing, but then they'll infringe on everyone else. That's the truth. <laughs> David may do in the chat room. Do you see this one? Apple is being sued, aren't they? <laughs> okay, which one are you referring to? Yes. Yes, they are. What are you laughing about? You oh, question, in life in general. Okay. Yeah, Good. everything's amusing tonight. Good. Send your questions to us in the chat room is the best way to get us during the live show, but uh, also live at category5.tv. You can pop us an email there. Uh, thanks again to uh, everybody who has shown their support for Category 5 this week. Uh, we've been watching that uh, donation thermometer steadily climb, uh, and that's that's been very exciting. Check out our website, category5.tv, to see our current progress. And uh, you'll also get to see what our goals are and what it is that we uh, that we need to do over the next uh, little while. So thank you to everybody who has shown their support this week. And again, I encourage you to check out our website, Category5.tv, to, uh, to see where we stand. Cool. All right, well, we might as well uh, jump straight into questions. Uh, we've got a lot going on tonight. Um, so we're going to do our absolute best to get to your questions. But again, if we, uh, if we can't get to you tonight, we will... Uh, we will take your email live at category5.tv and uh, we'll get those in as soon as possible. Great. All right. So our first question here is from Greg. He says, Hey, Greg. Hi, Robbie and Krista. I'd like to do a offline installation, installation of Ubuntu on a friend's laptop at work. There will be no internet connection. The firewall at work will prevent us from connecting. Is this possible? If so, will he have will he just have to install the updates when at home after a fresh install offline? Hmm. Yeah, you can install Ubuntu. You can install Linux uh, without having to have an internet connection. But during the installation procedure, it's going to ask you if you're installing Ubuntu. Now, each uh, Linux distribution has a slightly different installer. With Ubuntu in particular, it's going to ask you if you'd like to install the uh, updates as it installs the operating system. So in that case, if you're installing with no internet connection, you would say no to that question because you wouldn't be able to get them and it would just hang up. So, um, so go with uh, yeah, go with that. Once he takes it home, uh, put him on to perfectbuntu.category5.tv. You've got to have an internet connection to uh, to get access to that, and that gives you a lot of the restricted extras that are not necessarily available in the meta pack. Uh, as well as some bonus features like uh, extra plugins for the GIMP if you want to be able to do graphic editing and things like that. Um, there, there's a lot of stuff in, in there. So, and then of course you can use uh, you can use the Synaptic Package Manager in order to uh, 
uh, install a different desktop if he wants to get away from Unity, if he wants to uh, follow the tutorial from a couple weeks back on installing LXDE or XFCE. Uh, those are a couple of the options. There are tons of different uh, desktop environment options in Synaptic, though, so uh, so feel free to look around. And then you can get your updates, too. So no problem there. It'll work just fine. But you won't be able to get some of those multimedia things until you get those packages like Perfect Boot 2 provides. There'll be some stuff missing. All right, so next question... Says, hey, Robbie, Krista, and everybody else. I was thinking about building an Unraid box. I've got 14 good hard drives available, but putting so many hard disks together could make some heat. So mm. I was wondering, would a normal case and a 5x3 drive bay work well enough, or something more professional like a Norcotech RPC 4020 or similar to be better? And so, an, sorry, what's that device? I'd like to look it up. Uh, the Norcotech RPC 4020. Norco Tech with a K, RPC 4020. says, right. in a normal case, the drives are really close together. At least with a drive bay, the airflow is closer to the drives, so that might make a difference, even though the drives are close together. Right. So it is not as easy as it looks. But then that is why I ask you and find out what you think, because I can't actually test it myself. Gotcha. Greetings from Jot. Jot, I think that this uh, device that I'm looking at here, this is the one that he's asked us about the RPC 4020 is a little bit of overkill for what you're probably wanting to do uh, just knowing a little bit about your your setup and, and uh, you, you probably want to have space but that's more that to me like it's it's a 4U server rack mount system that you connect into a server it, it looks more like something that you'd set up in a, in a business environment an office environment where you need um, that massive hot swappable drive bays and stuff so you're asking about that the heat and heat dissipation and the ability to get some good airflow around those drives. Um, you're right that with a standard chassis, like your thinking is right on, on the money, right on track. A couple things I would look at. First of all, you've got 14 hard drives. Remember that an Unraid box has single drive fault tolerance. If you add 14 drives, even though you think that that's great, because you're going to get more capacity, you're probably better to go with a, a lower amount of drives with bigger drives if possible. So for example, if you've got a couple of 200 gigs in there, don't even bother with those because it's not it's not significant enough of space to be putting into your array to bring down the uh, fault tolerance so substantially. With 14 drives, you have a much higher chance of having two of those drives fail at the same time than you do with, uh, say for my, uh, for my setup, I've got uh, eight drives. Uh, and that's definitely as high as I would probably go with that type of fault tolerance. If you have two drives fail, you're going to lose data from one of the drives. So um, the whole idea behind Unraid is, yes, to have lots of space, but also to have that fault tolerance and redundancy of having the parity drive. So um, having 14 drives, you would definitely want to make sure you have an extremely high-end uh, power supply. You'd want to have a very good UPS on that system, and you'd want to have everything set up so that if the power goes out, it keeps running, or it does a safe shutdown using... APC software or something like that. So there are risks involved in using that many drives, uh, especially if they are older drives. If you have two of them fail at once, right? If they've been sitting around for a while, it's quite possible. So I would more, I would be more apt to go with less drives in the Unraid unit um, and just slowly add more space as you can by pulling out one of the smaller drives, adding a, and putting in a bigger one and letting it rebuild. Uh, Krista, do you understand what the what the Unraid system is that we're that we're talking about? Uh, I, not I completely. No. Feel free to interject because <laughs> you're kind of like the proxy for for the viewers who are thinking, "What is he talking about?" So I, I encourage you to to feel free to kick me or interrupt me or whatever. Just don't kick my bad toe. That's all I ask. I broke my toe last night. Not a pleasant feeling. So he's been hobbling around. <laughs> hobbling. You see me at work. I was just like limping around. Um, Unraid is a, a really awesome piece of software. Uh, from Lime Technology, lime-technology.com. And basically what this software does is it lets you build hardware that has all different hard drives, right? And with, it, with those hard drives, it shares the space of those drives, but it also has what's called parity fault tolerance. So hmm. if one of the drives fails, you can take it out, replace it, and it rebuilds, and you don't lose any of the data. 
Oh, that's pretty so neat. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the greatest things about Unraid, as opposed to the the traditional RAID scenario where you've got multiple drives, but it's RAID. Uh, with Unraid, you can have any drives, any speed. Doesn't matter what bus they're on. They can be SATA combined with IDE combined with external FireWire. It doesn't really matter what type of drive it is. Mm -hmm. It will add them to the array, and you'll get the full capacity of those drives. So. Um, so it's a different from a RAID where mm -hmm. if you have two drives, it might only give you the capacity of one, and the drives have to be identical. So, um, so w just backing up a little bit, so that's kind of what Unraid is, and you can check them out at lime-technology.com. That's this website here, uh, and this is what I use here for uh, for our uh, for our backups and file storage and things like that. Um, so for you, Jot, keeping the heat down. Uh, what I did, keeping in mind that I stuck to a maximum of eight hard drives. So in a standard chassis, you're right, if you've got the drives one on top of another, there's going to be very little room for the airflow. So you need to make sure that they that there are some you know, 120 millimeter fans that are blowing directly onto the drives and then blowing out the back of the drives as well, so that there's uh, a blow over the drives and a suction out to the back of the chassis or to the front of the chassis. Um, what I would do is I would just get into the search engine and just type hot swap SATA bay, something like that. Uh, and y you'll probably find several different... I'm just going to see if that brings up any results. What I got was a six drive hot swappable bay. Now here's a single drive unit. The, this is the first one that came up. More, This is more expensive than I would spend for, for such a thing, but that's a single drive. But you can see the idea behind it is you can install that into a regular unit, uh, regular chassis. So the chassis, as long as you've got the ability to pull out, you know, three of the slots at the front, the five and a quarter bays, uh, you'll be able to install one of these units that holds six hard drives. Say, Let's see if I can find one. I'll try using the word cage instead. <coughs> Raid enclosure would be another one. Here we go. This is pulling more of the results that I want. So this is the kind of unit that I'm talking about, Chad. So this would have built-in cooling, and you see that it has uh, some airflow on the front. So that's going to be what you see at the front of the computer, and it also has some suction on the back that pulls um, the air out the back, and it, it keeps your drives cool, but it does it with all from within one contained unit. It doesn't have to be this brand. Like this is just the first one that came up that seemed applicable in uh, in a Google search, but uh, but that's the kind of unit that I'm thinking. So you get a couple of those and the chassis that'll hold them, and then uh, a couple of drives in the system as well, but space them out so that they're not touching and you know right on top of each other, and make sure that you've got that you know good cooling uh, going through that system as well. So uh, big fans on the front, big fans on the back, and if your chassis doesn't support that, I would suggest looking at a new chassis, uh, get something that's going to be able to provide you with better uh, better airflow suction from the front, uh, blowing out the back. So, okay. And let us know how it goes. Be interested to, uh, to hear how that goes. All right. So from Chris Reich, it hey says, Chris. Hi, Robbie. New motherboards often come with just one PS2 connector with two colors, or colors, as you may say, in the Great White North, with a OU. Just so oh, know. the North. Yep. <laughs> so, how does one connect both a PS2 keyboard and a PS2 mouse to the motherboard with only one PS2 connector? Love the show. Thank you for the pretty Canadians and for answering such deeply profound questions. All my best, Chris Wake, Rochester, New York. Thanks, Chris. Um, okay, so he's got like a you've got a laptop computer or a computer these days. A lot of times, even the desktop computers. PS2 is the little round one, the mm -hmm. little you know the purple or green, green being the, the mouse purple being the keyboard. So um, a lot of computers these days only come with one and they say, well, pff, just get USB keyboards or USB mice, um, which is all fine and good. I mean, if you get something like what I'm using here, I don't know if you can, err, it's corded. You know, it's just an optical mouse. It's five bucks and so, you know, <laughs> who cares, right? Um, so just throw a USB mouse on it and that's probably the best way to go. But you can get a, a Y splitter for those, Chris, because understand that when they, when they, brought it from two to one, they're not deprecating the ability to use a PS2 mouse or a PS2 keyboard. They're just putting it onto the same port so that it's 
It's like the old laptops that had PS2. It could be either or, but not both. Uh, but you can use a Y adapter in order to split that. So uh, just do a quick search for PS slash 2 Y dash adapter cable, perhaps. Um, cable gear comes up. They actually have uh, what looks not quite like a cable, but it plugs into one port and it gives you the two. And that's two dollars and seventy cents. So you can see, like you know, if you if you get online or you pop by like some OEM dealer, they'll be able to throw you something <laughs> like that. That's the that's the simple way. But honestly, do I want something like that hanging out of the back of my computer? If it's stationary, sure. Or, you know, something like that. But if it's going to be, you know, increasing the potential of somebody tripping over it and snapping the internal <laughs> motherboard of my computer because it's, you know, pulled on the cable, then I wouldn't I wouldn't risk it. I'd just go with a USB keyboard. Um, but for 2 bucks and 70 cents, get something like that. And like I say, there are keyboard versions as well. Just search for PS2 Y adapter. And pretty much any online shop or local shop should have those as well. David Maydu says they're two dollars and seventy cents. Uh, oh, what's that in UK pounds? <laughs> uh, if you're serious, if you want to know what two dollars and seventy cents would be in UK pounds, here's a, a fun little tidbit about Google. If we just head over to Google.com or, in my case, Google.ca, because we're being patriotic, it's Canada Day week. Okay, so here we go. What was it? Two dollars and seventy cents USD in uh, UK pounds should do it. No, okay. In let's try just pounds. Come on, Google. There we go. Okay, two point seven zero USD in pounds, and it automatically translates that over. One point six nine. So one pound six nine. Cool. Google's cool that way. You can use this to convert anything. If you know the, you know, uh, 40 degrees C and F is 104 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, little things like that. If you know what to search for, it just quickly gives you that that value. Google always thinking of stuff. <laughs> so clever. So clever. Mm -hmm. So let's try throwing in our couple of questions <laughs> here while All we right. can. Uh, from Edward Murphy. Hey, Edward. Is there a reliable Windows 7 64-bit Twitter client? Internet says no to Seismic and TweetDeck for Windows 7 64-bit. Solution for now, Twitter in the browser. Did he just use the, the, the word Windows and stable in the same sentence? Let's, uh, let's see if there's a period in between. No, no. He, he did. That's stable, uh, reliable Windows. <laughs> uh, so no. moving on. No. No. <laughs> Anything you put on that thing is just going to crash. It's just going to crash. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Windows 64-bit, uh, if it doesn't work with Seismic, what you can do, get on over to Seismic's website. Let's do it the old-fashioned way. Seismic, and it is seismic.com. So never take the risk when you're live on the air. Okay, get started. And you'll see, okay, there's Seismic Mobile, Seismic Desktop, which is the one you would go for, and you'd say, ah, oh, but it doesn't work on Windows 64-bit. So what you do is you go Seismic Web, okay? And what this does is it does use your browser to run what, uh, what is, in all essence, a, a fully functional running version of Seismic, okay? So then take it one step further, and what I'm going to do is get an application from the Mozilla Group, uh, Mozilla Foundation, called Prism. And I'll just find a website for you that has a Windows version of that. Uh, Prism.mozillalabs.com. This application allows you to run web applications on your desktop as if they were actual programs. Okay. So what you do is you install Prism, and then you run your Seismic web version. Through, uh, did I say, did I say Seismic? I said, I meant to say, <laughs> install Prism, run Seismic web version through Prism, 
and it will actually create an icon that is, in all essences, to you, you'll forget that you're even using the web. Uh, you'll just think that it's a, an application, and, and you load that up, and boom, it's, it's just like running an app on your computer. That's Web 2.0 at its best. So give that a try. Prism.MozillaLabs.com for that, and Seismic.com for the other. Down here, try Seismic Web. Sign up for an account, get it all set up, and then you'll be able to launch it right in your Prism. But then you can also, you know, if you're not at your computer, you can be at a, you know, somewhere else, and you can log into Seismic from there. And what exactly is Prism? Prism is the one that allows you to run web sites or web programs as applications on your computer. Mm -hmm. So you think about something like Gmail. Just to mm -hmm. use an example, really, Gmail's set up to be like a program. It's it's like your inbox. It's like your your email client, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't need an email client for it because you're going to use the web. You're just going to bring it up in Firefox or in Internet Explorer or whatever you're using. Chrome. With Prism, it will create an icon on your desktop that you just launch it and say Gmail, and it actually looks like a program right on your website without ever having to bring up Firefox or whatever. Mm, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. <laughs> if you're familiar with Zimbra Desktop, that's actually how they created their application, too. They're taking that to the next level and saying, we'll actually distribute this as if it's an application, but really, it's just a prism wrapper on a website, basically, an Ajax website. So, Because these days, it's really hard to tell the difference between what's web and what's an application, because really, everything is based on the similar APIs, and it's fantastic. If you really want to blow your mind, you can check out iOS. This is the one that we were talking about last week a little bit in the news. iOS.info. And what this is, is a browser-based cloud desktop environment. Oh! And it's offline right now as they're preparing to relaunch on July 4th. So they're obviously mm -hmm. going through a big update. But that is an Ajax client that runs like an operating system through your browser. So you put that in Prism and make it full screen, you'd never know. It's like an operating system. So it really takes things to the next level. Prism's cool. <laughs> what, uh, tell us in the chat room what you use Prism for. Be interested to know. At, uh, at my office, we started using it for our web-based uh, contact management system so that we don't have to run it in a browser. We just click on our contact management icon on the desktop and it launches the, the system. So, it can be used for a lot of different things. <clears throat> We've got uh, just a minute, but uh, do we have any other questions that uh, we can we squeeze in? We do. Um, I'm not sure how long these questions will take, so <laughs> so let's uh, let's just try one from John Crisp. Hey, John. It says hi, Robbie and crew. I watched your tutorial on Synergy, but still, I can't get to work. I can't get it to work. I'm trying to connect to my old XP box as a client. What needs to be connected to that box? Just the Ethernet cable to my router. Now I have the VGA connected to my HD monitor. Should only the Windows 7 DVI connections exist? That's my dilemma. Not sure hmm. of the connections required of my XP box. Thanks for a great show. Cheers. Okay, John. Here's, <laughs> here's what we need to consider is... What we, what we need to consider is how Synergy works, and it helps if I mute the right microphone. There we go, as the ladies switch. We're going to figure this all out, John. John, uh, Synergy allows you to have one physical keyboard and mouse, so that's plugged into your, your one computer, and then drag your cursor onto the next computer, and all of a sudden you're able to control that computer. So you're thinking, I get the impression that you're used to remote desktop, you're used to maybe VNC, stuff like that, where you're, you're controlling things by uh, moving around with, I don't know, if you just dual monitor support or something like that. In your case, your Windows XP system, you're right, you need that Ethernet cable, but you also do need to have a monitor on that system so that when you drag your mouse, you've got a monitor to bring your mouse over to. So think of... 
uh, a dual monitor scenario where you've got two monitors side by side and you're able to drag the mouse from one to the other. That's exactly what Synergy gives you, except the difference between this and a dual monitor setup, where a dual monitor setup is one computer with two monitors. This is two computers with two monitors. So you get the advantage of perhaps you've got Windows here and Linux here. So for development, that's fantastic. Uh, perhaps you've got uh, a really powerful system here and one that's just used for web surfing here. So you can get away with you know, doing all your video encoding over here and it's super, super fast, but then you drag your mouse over here and you've just got a web browser and your t t Twitter and stuff like that. So it can just be a, a dirt cheap, uh, you know, run-of-the-mill old computer. And yet you'd never know because it's interacting between the two. So you need to have a monitor because each computer has to have a monitor. You need to have one keyboard and mouse plugged into the host and then your guest also needs to have that high-speed uh, network connection so that the host and the guest can communicate. So I hope that that makes things, yeah, maybe that's what it is, Agamotto, is maybe you're used to a KVM switch where you've got one monitor with one keyboard and one mouse, which is a different thing altogether because you're switching, you're only able to use one at a time with, uh, with uh, <laughs> I'm getting all my words com confused here, with Synergy you're able to use both at the same time as if it was one system but it's really two systems, so uh, quite a bit different than a KVM, for sure. So, Hey, Hillary. Hey, how's it oh. going? Good, good. There we go. We'll have to get rid of the ticker there, because <laughs> the name changed. It's all good. Yeah, you keep them well? Yes, yeah? I am just fabulous. Thank you. Fantastic. I am great. And better than great, I've got great news for great you, news. world. Great news. Fantastic. So, are you ready for this? From the category 5.2 newsroom. Open source report blogger Joe Brockmeyer told readers yesterday that he's through telling people not to use Facebook. Instead, he says to use Facebook like you use any shared space. You never know who might be observing, and anything you leave behind might be gone in five seconds after you turn your back. His statement comes in response to Facebook's sudden ban of KDE applications on their social media, social media service and the way they reportedly have deleted photos that were previously uploaded through KDE apps, which rely on KiPi, Keepy? KiPi. Um, the KDE plugin system, which takes care of uploading files to Facebook on Linux's KDE desktop. Users who attempt to use applications such as Gwenview to upload a picture to Facebook will receive a warning that it now uses an invalid API key. Don't ever forget that as you're using Facebook, who really has control of your content? Because KDE users were reminded again this week that it's not them. The Mozilla Co Corporation shipped Firefox 5 this week, almost exactly three months after it shipped Firefox 4. Fasten your seatbelts because Mozilla plans to ship Firefox 6 in six weeks, with Firefox 7 six weeks after that, as they launch into their new fast-paced release cycle, which has corporate users on the fence as they find it difficult or impossible to turn around major browser updates in only six weeks. By re releasing a newer version of its browser every six weeks, Mozilla helps to match Google's development speed. While Firefox 5 release doesn't contain the wealth of new features of what some would say warrants a major browser upgrade, Mozilla claims that they have made over 1,000 improvements to Firefox 5 in areas of performance and user interface usability. General web browsing and JavaScript speed has been improved while memory usage has seen a decrease over Firefox 4. Can you keep up? Let us know by sending us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. Last Tuesday, the District Court of Berlin began a hearing or began hearing a lawsuit which may have enormous consequences for the way that software is developed and distributed, according to Linux kernel's developer, Harold Welt. In an announcement on the open source advocacy website, gpl-violations.org. Router manufacturer AVM is suing to prevent family web filtering software developer, Cybits, from changing any parts of the firmware used in AVM's routers including the Linux kernel, according to Weld. AVM is alleging that Cybits has infringed its uh, copyright because it sells software that removes AVM's altered modules from the Linux kernel embedded in AVM routers. Cybits uh, counters that they not 
or sorry, the counter that not only does it need um, to remove some of the alterations to the kernel made by AVM in order for its filtering program to work, but it has every right to do so under GPL licensing. The Linux kernel is licensed under the GNU General Public License version 2, GNU GPL, which, as well notes, is a free and open source software license, permitting everyone to use, study, share, and improve, uh, prove works which it used. Um, so, open source advocates like Weld um, say that AVM, AVM will win its case, or no, what am I saying? I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> Not again, guys, come on. So Weld, he's saying that if AVM wins its case, it could prove to be a significant threat to GPL. We will certainly update you as soon as we hear more about this. PC Linux OS developers released an update to their popular Linux distribution yesterday. PC Linux OS uh, 2011.6 is now available for download with a brand new look and lots of updates. The release for now comes in LXDE, LXDE Mini, and KDE version for 32-bit systems, but a 64-bit version reportedly will be available in the next uh, coming weeks. You can check out the new release, which is free to download, and use it um, at this website, pclinuxos.com. You can get these awesome full stories at the website, category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Rory W. Nash with contributions from our fabulous community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, send us an email at newsroom at category5.tv. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Hillary Rumble. Thanks, Hillary. No problem. Yeah. Sorry for my little, my uh, brain input malfunction. I can't read today. Is that what? It, is I think is I think the happened? weather is. It's in my motherboard in my brain, and it's. Uh, did you Did you hear what happened last week? No. Did you hear the one Just about? Just ask the chat room. What happened, world? What Let happened, chat room? <laughs> you don't You don't know what's happening on this side of the camera, and then, you know. We don't know what happens. We don't know. Until it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily we have a chat room who tells us things as they are happening, like when our mics don't work or, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Indeed. Indeed. So they are our sensors. They are sure. fabulous. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Hillary. No problem. Nice to see you. Thanks. Glad to be here. Now, you uh, were you out on the on the bike Yesterday? Did you make it? I was out today, actually. Today? <laughs> you, you look That's like you've partially, been out on a dirt bike. That's partially why I was a, possibly a tad tardy entering the oh, studio seriously? today. <laughs> Do you want to tell people what's uh, what's going on and, and how well, that was? I, was? I'd like to know. I want uh, to know well, how it went today. It's the first time you're hearing about it. Yeah. Um, it was really, really good. Um, it was raining earlier today, which was perfect because yeah. it created a great deal of oh, mud. Mud. So I'm hoping it'll turn out. I honestly haven't looked at any of the footage from... They, they don't know what you're talking about. Oh. Well, world, let me <laughs> fill you in. Let's just <laughs> rewind a tad. So, Robbie has been in cahoots with Liquid Image Company, who creates various, um, various, I guess, ways to incorporate a video camera into your active lifestyle. And I have the privilege of reviewing um, a set of goggles used for MX, uh, such as like dirt bikes or ATVs and, and off-road uh, vehicles, goggles you would wear um, under your helmet. And I am using them in a fun, fun, fabulous way to see what this is all about. And so, do you see a picture? Yeah. Do you want to see a picture? Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty groovy. Yeah. And so today I was out um, bombing around with them on and it was super muddy and rainy which was great. Perfect. So I was actually like literally caked in mud. You would not believe. <laughs> like I was caked. It was just on me. Really, really good. So you wouldn't believe I that. I can't wait to hear how the, the camera performs. It's a mask. You remember my, my underwater camera mm -hmm. mask. So they've taken that product line. It's liquidimagecanada.com if you'd like to check them out. But they've expanded that product line into snow sports mm -hmm. and uh, motor really sports, cool. extreme sports. Uh, and they're even expanding it further beyond that. So very exciting stuff. It's very and cool. I'm so looking forward to to your review this I summer hope as well. You guys like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stay tuned for it because it's it's really a neat device. And um, for someone like me who has tried to document 
some extreme sports in the past. I mean, right, yeah. You, holding your video camera and driving at the same time probably not your best best idea. So I figure you could use the thing for anything. I mean, this this has got. I don't know if you can see from the picture, <laughs> but it's a mask, and it has a HD digital camera right in the middle. So you can imagine, basically, it records exactly what you see. Mm -hmm. So if I'm ordering a hamburger, you know, I'm going to be asking, you know, wearing my mask. <laughs> I'm oh, making yeah. a video. Documentary footage. Whole new, whole new <laughs> whole style. Whole new level. Whole you new level. You don't even know what you could come up with with this. So stay tuned. Very cool. That's all I'm saying. Looking forward to that this summer <laughs> from Hillary Rumble and Category 5 TV. Get ready to rumble. You've never oh, heard that yeah. before. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Elle. No problem. Category 5 Technology TV is brought to you by Pogo Plug at cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. And also... Uh, from Planet Calypso. Check them out. You can now fly around in space. Cat5.tv slash Calypso for the massive multiplayer online game. Now, Hillary was talking there in the news about uh, the new release of uh, PC Linux OS 2011.6. Uh, and this has just been released, and we're excited to be uh, privileged to uh, review it tonight. And I think what, what makes it kind of exciting for me is that PC Linux OS was I guess an, I, I, exciting is not the word nostalgic PC <laughs> Linux OS as you recall if you have ever caught up on some of the older episodes of Category 5 TV it was the first feature that we ever did on Category yeah. 5 way back <laughs> with PC Linux OS 2007 so it's neat to see for me you know, being an Ubuntu user at this point, but uh, seeing the progress of PC Linux OS over the years, and uh, and it's it's encouraging to see that that they have grown and that the the distribution is is quite fantastic. If you're looking for uh, Linux distribution, what we're doing over the next several weeks is we're going to be looking at some of the available options. We're going to try to keep up with uh, as many current options as uh, as we can. If you have a favorite distribution that you've never seen on the show, email us live at category5.tv, and we will do our absolute best to get that distribution on. This week we're going to be looking at PC Linux OS version 2011.6, which you can download from pclinuxos.com. And next week we're going to be looking at Zorin OS. So, very cool. So how much do you know about Linux? I mean, you're a Mac user. Uh, you know, I, I try not to, to know too much. You just kind of, like, block it out? <laughs> It's terrible. My How does he ever is, get this job? It's Mac. <laughs> yeah. So Linux is basically it's an all to to keep it real simple. Uh, there there's Windows and there's Mac, right? That's what we're led to believe. But did mm -hmm. you know that there is an alternative that allow that allows you to run something on your PC hardware? So this is the hardware that you would normally run Windows on. Uh, that is free. You can get all different versions of it. This is why we're saying that we're going to be looking at different distributions because there are so many different versions of the operating system that are available for you to use. We've been using uh, Ubuntu for the longest time, and this week, again, we're looking at one called PC Linux OS. So you can go to their website, pclinuxos.com, and imagine that you can actually download this full operating system along with its suite of software, everything. So what makes Linux different from Windows? Well. Primarily, again, keeping things really simple, and if you want to take it uh, further in the chat room, go ahead. Uh, but basically, you know, viruses, Mac for the longest time has said, oh, well, get a Mac because you're sick of viruses. Well, really, it, it's not about Mac versus Windows. Again, viruses are a Windows problem. So if we go with Mac, sure, you're going to have less viruses. If you go with Linux, same deal. So, but Linux is free. This isn't Linux versus anything. It's just here's another alternative for you. So I've booted up my PC Linux OS system. It's the first time we've had a look. Here it comes. So we are running PC Linux OS with uh, KDE 4.6.4. Uh, PC Linux OS 2011.6 uh, just released. Uh, features some really great uh, current software. It's got the Linux kernel 2.6.38.8. It's got Xorg 1.10.2 for those of you who are interested in that sort of thing. Very current uh, version of X. Uh, it's got GCC 4.5.2, uh, GLibC 2.10.1 right out of the box. And I was very surprised, as a matter of fact, that uh, even though I just installed this, it's, it has out of the box Firefox 5. 
So that was cool because all my other systems I had to update it. It was a kind of a forced update, which mm. was kind of annoying. <laughs> But uh, with PC Linux OS, right out of the box it came with it. Uh, it's also got Thunderbird 3.1.11, which is going to become obsolete very soon when 5 comes out. Uh, and uh, interestingly enough, it didn't come with an Office suite. Usually Linux comes mm -hmm. with something that's an alternative to Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. And um, that would be, you know, traditionally OpenOffice. These days a lot of distributions are coming with LibreOffice, which is a fork of OpenOffice. Um, but what's interesting is PC Linux OS said, okay, we've got to fit this thing all on a CD. We want people to be able to download this, burn it to a CD, because that's how you can do this. You can download it and put it on your own CDR and then install it on as many computers as you want for free with, without the viruses and without all that kind of stuff. Um, what they did is they instead included something called LibreOffice Manager. And interestingly, when you click on that, all it does is it just simply connects to the internet, it starts downloading LibreOffice, and it gets all the stuff. So they were effectively able to exclude LibreOffice from the distribution in such a way that uh, it doesn't take up space on the CD that you're burning and doesn't increase the size of your, um, your actual download of the ISO image. But if you'd like to have that, it's a quick double click and it's installed. So that was pretty brilliant. Some of the things I want to look at with each of the distributions that we're looking at, of course, ease of installation. We want to look at aesthetics, uh, organization of the menu system, uh, the included suite of software, uh, out-of-the-box usability, and then anything that makes us go, hmm. So this is your first time, then, seeing PC Linux OS. Yes. First of all, aesthetics. You know, it, uh, it, it looks nice. looks pretty clean. It, it looks... Uh, you know, from a, I would say from a Windows user standpoint. Now, this is using KDE, and normally I'm not a mm -hmm. KDE fan. I'm a very much a GNOME fan. But that's that's changing because I need to find an alternative before GNOME 3 takes over the world. So, it's very much. You can see that the operating system sort of looks like a Windows 7 kind of system. Little uh, a little darker theme and looks nice. Beyond that, aesthetics. I think uh, <laughs> I think it looks quite pretty. One of the things that... Uh, it, it does include uh, visual effects. If you have that ability on your system, if you have a nice graphics card, it's going to automatically have 3D enhancements and things like that. Uh, Functionality-wise, well, I should just say the ease of installation factor of it. It took a few minutes to install. There were just a few mouse clicks, and it was super, super easy to install. Uh, Linux has come a long way. PC Linux OS is uh, at the forefront of ease of installation. Uh, it was a fantastic installation procedure. Uh, but what happened next is that my display was the wrong resolution and I thought, okay, well, how hard is this going to be? So the first thing that I do as, a, as an end user is I right click on the, the desktop and see what options come up. And I notice as I do that, Nothing. well, unlock widgets, refresh desktop, icons, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it's not there. So next I'm pointing at these icons down here and you see little things. Configure your desktop. Configure your computer. I don't know if you can see that there. Okay, so I click on that, and as an end user, you know, for, from an end user experience standpoint, asked me for my root password or my administrator password, which I set up when I installed it, and now it runs PC Linux OS Control Center. Again, very uh, visually appealing, and simply clicking on hardware. There's very few options. It doesn't look cluttered. And I see right there, configure video card. Configure monitor, configure resolution. All I did was click on that. How hard is that? Nice and easy to find. You know, as somebody who's never used it, didn't take me a long time at all to find what mm -hmm. it was I was looking for. So I think that as far as usability goes for the end user out of box experience, it's, uh, it's quite good for that kind of thing. This type of control panel, it looks well laid out. It doesn't have a search feature right uh, visually that, uh, that compares to, say, Windows 7's search feature of their control panel. But then at the same time, it's not nearly as cluttered. It's very, very streamlined. There's very few things on each menu, and it's very clear, clean, and con concise. Looks really good. 
So then next thing that I want to know is out of the box experience. I'm going to be using this on the internet. So what does it come with? Internet. I've got Firefox and I've also got Conqueror, which to me is kind of a little bit of bloat. Why do I have two browsers? I guess we can choose which one we want to use. Conqueror, of course, could also be there for use as uh, the uh, to navigate folders and things on the computer. So maybe that's why it's there. Makes sense that way. Bringing up our website, end user experience right out of the box. Everything comes up fairly well. Keep in mind that performance on my screen is not going to compare to uh, this will actually run a lot faster on a native system. We're running through virtualization in order to provide a demonstration live on the air. And you'll see that uh, right out of the box, if I just scroll down a little ways, that it does indeed, straight out of the box, it has flash mm -hmm. features. And I didn't have to install or request the installation of any of those things. Um, so right on that website, it's already lo loaded uh, U our YouTube channel. So that's what this is here. So Flash works out of the box. It's great. Um, end user experience that way, I think, is, is good because I don't want to have to go through and install. I mean, I created Perfect Ubuntu as a workaround to the fact that Ubuntu doesn't include all those things because of the, you know, for obvious reasons, they're not free. Um, but, and that is as in freedom. So uh, beyond that, the organization of the menu system in um, PC Linux OS is is quite good. I I like Linux in that uh, uh, with Windows in particular, and I don't know how this is on the Mac, but uh, if you've ever looked at a Windows system that's been running for a year or two years, the menu system gets really really cluttered with junk. Yeah. You install a program, it creates folders in the start menu, it creates icon after icon after icon in that folder, and you know if I install one program, all of a sudden I've got this folder filled with ten different things, and all I wanted was that one program. With Linux, and uh, this is one of the things that we want to look at, is how well each distribution does it. But with Linux, typically, you get a scenario where internet applications are in the internet menu. There's no bloat. There's no add remove or read me or anything like that. There's no extra stuff that's included in that. It's just really straightforward and uh, everything that, uh, that you would expect. So if I install an internet application, it's on the internet menu. My virtual machine is having some trouble right now. So unfortunately, that's a case of my virtual machine uh, running on uh, low hardware, but that's that's still okay because I've gone through the system. Include a suite of software. One of the things that uh, that PC Linux OS comes with right out of the box that uh, some people say, you know, well, where, you know, how can I get this on Linux? Is a very easy to set up firewall. Out of the box, PC Linux OS is wide open. Uh, it assumes that you're protected by your NAT firewall. You know, you're, you're behind a router, so your computer is generally safe. But to take it one step further, you can set up your firewall simply by clicking on the icon on your desktop called Firewall Setup. And that is just a couple of clicks, and you're all good to go. So that's a nice feature. And then the general suite is, uh, is available there as well. Now, PC Linux OS also supports uh, your RPM packages as well as apt-get, uh, Synaptic Package Manager, so that's quite interesting if you want to be able to install your applications. There's uh, a lot of ways to do that, and so users from all different platforms are going to be comfortable with that. Um, and this again, I'm looking at the KDE version of, uh, of the distribution. There is also the LXDE and LXDE Mini, and then we're looking at the GNOME version is going to be coming out very soon as well uh, for the new version. There we go. Firewall setup, as I was saying, is right up on the desktop there. Any questions in the chat room as, uh, as I chat here? We can see once this comes up how simple that is. Very, very easy. Which services would you like the internet to connect to? And just a bunch of check boxes. Really simple setup. No questions in the no, chat? Room? No? No questions? Chat room? Beyond that? Now here's the menu system that I was discussing here, Krista. You'll see on a Linux system you've got everything is very well organized and PC Linux OS does it the right way. Video. You've got there's your video stuff, right? 
you go into sound, and there's your sound stuff. Things are logical. Things make yeah. sense where they are. It's not a cluttered menu of a whole bunch of program names with a bunch of folders that have a whole bunch of junk. This is very, very streamlined. You know, you go into Office, and there's all your Office applications. It's nice. Internet is all your Internet stuff. And it does indeed also include XChat IRC. So if you'd like to get into our chat room, that's nice that it's included. Uh, but Linux, again, you can install software using Synaptic Package Manager or apt-get or yum or however you want to do it. There's so many different ways, and it just gets it off the Internet, and you're, uh, you get it for free, and it installs. So PC Linux OS, it looks great. Nothing really makes me go, hmm, about it, other than when my virtual machine kind of lags, but that's not <laughs> PC Linux OS's fault at all. I would say that this is definitely one that I would recommend to, to check out at the very least. Um, if you're looking for a distribution to run on a new computer, if you've got a system that, uh, that doesn't have an OS or you want to revitalize an older system, PC Linux OS will automatically detect your hardware. Uh, it works very well with, uh, with some hardware that I would say would be problematic with distributions such as Ubuntu, uh, such as Wi-Fi. If you're having trouble with Wi-Fi adapters on your current distribution, uh, try PC Linux OS, and uh, granted, uh, you may have better luck getting your hardware working out of the box. So it's nice and clean. Like uh, like Krista and I were saying, aesthetically, it looks nice. Uh, it's got a good layout. Things are logical. It includes some widgets. If you click on this little guy up here, click on Unlock Widgets, and then you can go Add Widgets. And you can just take these guys and drag them onto your desktop. There's my battery, for example, and then I can lock my widgets. And there we go. So you can just drag them on and put them wherever you like. So very cool stuff. That's PC Linux OS 2011.6. And you can get it again from PCLinuxOS.com. We're going to be looking at uh, various distributions over the next couple of weeks. And uh, so we're going to be comparing those uh, so that we can make a decision as to, you know, what, what would we say is probably the ultimate uh, distribution for uh, for different types of users. So be ready. Uh, at the end of the series, we're going to allow you to vote for your personal favorite, and certainly we would encourage you to follow along with the series so that you're, you're not just voting on the ones that you've tried, but also uh, voting for the ones that you've seen demonstrated on the show as well. And if there are specific features that you want to know about, email us live at category5.tv. We'll let you know if those features are available for the distribution that you're looking for. But Linux, as it is, is a, is a kernel, and everything is built upon that. So uh, a lot of times you'll see that different applications are available across the board on all distributions. Even if it doesn't come with it out of the box, you can install that and it's because uh, it's Linux. Linux is Linux to Linux. So. Cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. How many times do you say Linux? I was trying for Are you trying to actually make my head explode? Is that what's well, I was, happening? I want... Uh, <laughs> The, the YouTube auto detection of the, the words to mm. add those keywords like crazy, you know? So if people are searching for Linux, they'll know. Is that overload? Linux. Linux. Mac. Stop. Mac. Stop. Apple. Stop. Mac. She's evil. <laughs> You're going to change the keywords of the show if you keep that up. <laughs> well, then you get some other good quality users to join the wonderful oh, yes. people we already have here. Convert them. Mac. No, no. That's, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me. Well, chat room, been nice having you here. You can vote for your favorite episode of Category 5 TV at our website, category5.tv. And uh, Krista would love to get your emails live at category5.tv. I'm putting words in your mouth, but I know that's what you're waiting for mm -hmm. is email. That's true. She I just sit here and I go, come on. She has more to talk about when, when she's got emails. email in front of her. It's true. That's just the way it is, right? Mm -hmm. So get your emails in. Cool? People want to see your desktop, so you'd have to bring up a remote. Oh, my desktop is a mess right now. It's a mess. But I will do it. There she is. There it is. It's a mess. Looks strikingly more expensive than PC Linux OS. It's because it's nice and, and clean. <laughs> right, right. And there's not, you see that huge battery symbol that you saw on the other one? There's no huge battery. It could change the size of it. Look at that. Whatever. Whatever. That's so nice. Whatever. Like, oh, I've got a little <laughs> icon fire. Just a little, it's all the way. Sure. <laughs> 
Hey, it's been fun, everybody. I hope you uh, enjoyed the show and look forward to having you here next Tuesday night. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, nice having you here. Mm, nice Larry, being here. Nice to see you. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk to you next Tuesday night. Thanks, everybody. Hey, guys. Thanks. See ya. Thank you.